Right. Well, who are we here at Careers in King Edwards? There is myself, I'm Lou Harper, and I've been with the college for about 10 years. Um, I've been in this position within the careers department for around seven years. And I'm delighted to say that I'm accompanied by my two colleagues, uh, Faye Lowe, there, I think, at the top of your screen, that's Faye, uh, who's a qualified careers advisor um, and also uh, Jane Edwards who is uh, also with us online today and I will introduce Jane as part of our administrative team work experience in UCAS we'll go through all of those. People are still joining us, but we're delighted to see you this evening. Thank you so much for so many of you for turning out. We'll keep this reasonably brief, but we are glad that we are here to introduce the career service. Myself and Faye are qualified careers advisors and our mission from the college uh, is to provide students with excellent careers advice and guidance. And the prerequisite for that is to have qualified careers advisors, Faye and myself, who are level six uh, qualified, the uh, gold sort of benchmark, the gold standard that is set for careers advice and guidance in our setting. Um, so we are both qualified careers advisors. And as I say, we're accompanied by Jane Edwards, who is our administrator, but actually has a wealth of experience in the college over 11 years, working as a personal tutor and also working for um, one of the faculties previously. So what do we do? Well, we offer impartial careers advice and guidance. Uh, we're here to uh, meet the needs for work experience, which, as I say, is one of Jane's expertise areas. We're also here to advise on the options after college. So work experience is part of that, but the university apprenticeship pathways um, are obviously a very important part of our work. We ensure that uh, the needs of each student um, is taken care of. And it's very important to us here at King Edwards that we actually look after all of our students. Um, and of course, we have um, students with mixed abilities and particular needs, which we ensure are obviously their needs are met too. Could we just um, ask, with it, sorry to interrupt you, uh, Lou, yeah. could we just ask that um, cameras are turned off? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, and in our team, it's really important that we also have people represented from the teaching staff. And Chris Broughton, who you'll see there probably at the top in the list of uh, staff, is a careers coordinator who actually you won't probably meet on most occasions, but is actually an integral part of the team representing teaching aspect of careers in the curriculum. We adhere to the Gatsby benchmarks, and some of you as parents may have read about these and may know of them if you're part of an educational institution. Um, and all institutions are working towards delivering the Gatsby benchmarks. These are important gold standards that are set by the government to meet the needs of uh, our young citizens as they work their way through education and go on to their next steps. So Chris is a really important connection between the careers department and actually the teaching subject staff. David Handy, who you'll see in the bottom corner, is also uh, one of our team. He is the careers lead for the college. Some of you may have met him in the capacity of admissions, and he's also in charge of marketing. So in actual fact, he works very much hand in glove with the uh, taking in of students and seeing them develop uh, through their time at the college alongside us. Um, we're based in the Careers Hub. We're at 11 Coventry Street. It's on the way to Tesco's from the main college and many students will be taking uh, that journey uh, several times a day, I'm sure. And many parents will be walking past there as well. 
We feel very privileged that actually from February of this year, we were uh, designated um, really the uh, inhabitants of this nice establishment. We've never been given a, an actual hub before, and it's given us an identity and somewhere for students to come and see us and actually have proper premises to uh, identify our careers uh, uh, work. Can I have the next slide, please, Faye? Thank you. So what do we do? We provide a holistic and purposeful approach to careers. Those are very fine words, but what does that mean? So each of our students, we like to support individually. Everyone will have a personal tutor, but they also have access to us as careers advisors and as a team. We help students to um, aim aspirationally and to be inspired. And two of the words that we like very much to use are inspiration and aspiration. We want all students to reach their full potential when they leave college and during the time that they're with us to make those connections, expand their horizons and have on board all of the things with them, along with their academic abilities to take those next steps. So we want students to leave feeling confident um, both in themselves and about the choices they're making. Um, we also have an inclusive approach. It's really important for us, as I mentioned, that actually all students have access, equal access to help uh, support advice and guidance and to make sure that they are indeed given the opportunity to uh, raise those aspirations and do themselves justice when they leave the college. Thank you, Faye. So our offer, every student when they leave college hopefully leaves with the A-levels that they require or in uh, there are two or three BTECs now alongside the A-levels. But we're not an FE college, we are A-levels and many of our students therefore still make that more traditional choice to go along to university. As you can see from those statistics, we have the 2022 statistics there. We are still actually formulating the 2023 statistics that we will produce shortly. But as you can see, out of 1,200 students, the majority of students still go on to university. And that's a well-trodden path for King Ed's and very traditionally served by the um, uh, talks that we have, the people that are on site from HE providers and the kind of things that all of the students will do with their UCAS applications, with their personal tutors. 30% of students also gain place at the higher tariff universities and Russell Group universities. And that's really important that we open up uh, students' horizons to consider those themselves worthy of those and to aim to help them aspire to those and achieve those aspirations. But alongside that, we are, of course, very aware that um, apprenticeships and early entry career level jobs um, and gap years indeed as well are a really important part of our offering. Students have um, opportunities to meet um, and we'll explain this a little bit later as my colleagues come in on this. The opportunity to meet apprenticeship providers, to understand what alternatives are in front of them um, as alternatives to the university route. And it's really important that students find their own levels with this and actually parents too. So HE is not the only way. Apprenticeships are certainly something we uh, really bring to the fore for all students to consider as an equal option. You can see there a gap here and it's very strange. I had a student the other day actually ask me, uh, is it OK if I do I need to apply for a gap year? Of course, gap years aren't actually a thing. They are a gap in education um, and before taking those next steps, perhaps in a more formal setting where in fact actually students may decide to travel or do some voluntary work and actually gain some skills and some life experience to take them on to their next steps. 
one of the things that Jane will talk about in a short while is the work experience. And of course, work experience gives an opportunity for students to um, look at the workplace, uh, have a taster of some of the things that an environment's job roles uh, that they might be looking at and make some decisions. Okay. Can I just ask if somebody could turn off their microphone and their uh, camera, please, for us, just so that everyone is muted? Thank you. So work experience is actually a really vital uh, part of what we expect from our students. And Jane will talk a little bit more about that so that you can understand how that works at King Eds. So all of these things give choice. And at the end of the day, what we want our students to have is that broadest choice possible. We want them to come across role models. We want them to be influenced by their teaching subject staff. And of course, yourselves as parents, um, you're a very, very important part of the equation. And so a lot of what we do is actually helping parents help their students. So as you will see in our programme throughout the year, we'll be offering a number of different opportunities where we can help parents look at both HE and uh, apprenticeships and any opportunities that might be needed further on for parents to have that information that will allow them to assist their young person. So if I could have the next slide, please, Faye. Thank you. I wanted to show this slide. Um, it doesn't matter who the people actually are, but I wanted to show you um, a few of the outcomes of uh, this advice and guidance, the plethora of support that we offer, the opportunities that we want uh, students to have, and we want them to take up whilst they're here. So, uh, Ricky Bogle, there isn't a picture there of him. He's actually uh, one of our alumni who is now a consultant at the world renowned Royal Marsden Hospital. He appeared on Channel 4's Super Surgeon and he came back last year to talk to us, some of our students who are on our medicine and healthcare pathway. He was so inspirational. And we want our students to be inspired by our alumni and some really significant figures that we are able to put in front of them. I know that every single person who was in that room, including myself, was quite awed by the opportunity to hear from him. Somebody who was very much in touch as well with the student populace, so he wasn't out of reach at all. Luke and Aubrey, who are there in the picture at the bottom, they are the most magnificent students from last year. They both acquired degree apprenticeships at PwC and NHS Finance. And both of them were part of our business accounting and finance pathway. And they were a complete inspiration from the moment we met them. They actually already had something about them which was a little different from some students. They were perhaps a little bit mature, more mature in some ways. Communication, their skills of being able to have some work experience that had allowed them to experience some um, connect, making connections with people. And they did a talk which is available on our website on our YouTube channel that you know you can all see and they were absolutely superb so please do uh, look that out and and see what the pathways and the inspiration that they had to go off and do an apprenticeship actually gave them uh, and they're coming back to talk to students next year. And then you'll see Ben Healy, internationally successful cyclist, uh, and uh, you can see him there with his hands up. He is an alumni from here as well. And in fact, one of his parents is a teacher here too. Um, they're just a sample of some of our students. But I think that you will all agree that you can see that um, these end results are um, both an engagement from the student and a provision from the college. And it's where all of that meets that we're interested. Thank you, Faye. I'm nearly at the end of my little bit, um, but I just wanted to put this slide um, in front of you. It's an opportunity just to see the real range of opportunities that will be in front of the students uh, that have just arrived with us. And it seems strange, I guess, in a way to be talking about um, the opportunities 
uh, after college when the students have just arrived. They're in their second week. But as you can see from hopefully these wonderful little circles that you have in front of you, um, the opportunities are vast. Um, we have careers one to one appointments that are available with Faye and I uh, throughout uh, the uh, time that students have with us. They have opportunities to do some career quizzes and use our platforms such as Unifrog and parents will have access to much of this information as well. Our website is uh, filled with information on careers. If you can seek that out, you'll also find there are quite a lot of tools on there that parents can use and uh, investigate uh, with students a number of different ways in which to find out about apprenticeships, work experience, um, a whole range of career options. There are trips and visits and um, my colleagues will be talking to you about some of those and the Meet the Employer series. We take very seriously our engagement with local and global and national employers so that students come across a range of uh, employer opportunities, but also they get to shake hands, they get to meet uh, a number of different people from a range of different roles. And of course, the UCAS support as well. Um, I'm going to hand over to Faye, who will talk through uh, the next slides with you. And of course, please don't forget that you have the opportunity to ask questions later on. I hope that that's been uh, of some informative interest in the early stages, and I'll give over to Faye now to continue. Thank you, Faye. Thanks so much, Lou. That was really great. Um, and I think that really was a great introduction to our service and, and what we offer to students and parents here at uh, at Kaylee and, and in the careers team. Um, what I wanted to just move on to now is to talk about our Kaylee pathways, which I think um, you may have heard of already, certainly from Opendale and in our prospectus on our website, um, but it's just to give a little bit more information about what that uh, actually means and in practice for students who are joining. So our KE pathways, as you can see from the screen, include about six or seven different sort of fields. And where we have picked these is where uh, we found are the most popular for our students. So, for instance, we have business accounting and finance, and creative media performing arts. We have our law and public services and medical and healthcare, STEM and teaching. And last year, we introduced um, our alternatives to university pathway as well. And um, what we found with that is that actually um, there's a, an increasing number of students who, although as Lou very, very rightly pointed out, the vast majority of our students do go to university, there is an increasing number of students who do want to go and um, look at apprenticeships or employment after um, college. And so as part of these pathways, what we try to do is offer really tailored support for our students um, to enable them to be in the best position possible when they leave college to actually find out more about these careers and, and successfully transition into those. And so part of that will be uh, tailored talks. Um, our students will be enrolled on to um, specific MSTs channels for each uh, pathway that they choose. There isn't a weekly time commitment uh, necessarily for these pathways, but what you will find is that we will schedule talks and events throughout the year. Uh, which will be advertised to students who have shown an interest in that pathway. We'll also um, signpost work experience opportunities, uh, trips and visits, and those sorts of things as well. And work experience, if I take as, as an example, perhaps teaching, we have a, a partnership with Star Vale Academy Trust, uh, where we've been able to provide at least 30 plus uh, work experience placements for our students who are interested in teaching. And I think Jane might talk a little bit more about that in afterwards, but I think that's just an important thing to understand is actually these pathways are there to be a really practical help for our students. Medical and healthcare, similarly, we will um, encourage students to take part in the Russell's Hall work experience programme, and that can be extremely useful for students who are then thinking about going on to study medicine or another healthcare um, career. And so our pathways really have um, been developed over the years. Um, as I say, alternative to university is quite new, um, but we're, we're um, providing a lot of support through that and it's really picking up traction. 
Um, last year we had um, some talks and workshops through Amazing Apprenticeships, uh, which were focusing on CV and application help, as well as um, on interview and mock assessment centre guidance. Um, because actually it's a very, very different process to thinking about university. And so apprenticeships can often be um, a little bit trickier to navigate. And so what we want to do is to make sure that there's a really good um, wealth of support there for our students who are more interested in those. Um, groups and so um, hopefully we are supporting students really well with that we try to develop that all the time as well. As you can see here from this slide um, it's just an example of, of perhaps a, a, a typical student journey and what we wanted to just identify on here is is what students can uh, think to do outside of their academic studies so if a student for instance as we've got on here is aspiring to work within finance or accounting they may very well choose one of those a levels or one of those a levels to study or others um, and the skills that come out of those a levels are you know fairly obvious what we want to do is get students thinking about the other activities around that that can support them into their next uh, stage. So that may be the enrichment that they enroll upon, which could be one of the pathways, the banking account and finance pathway. It could be the certificate in financial skills, um, which will gain the UCAS points. It is also then the employer engagement. And as we mentioned, working with employers is incredibly important for us. And it really brings a lot of added value to students, particularly when they're trying to stand out from the crowd, but also just to help students figure out whether that's really what they want to do. Sometimes working with um, you know, work experience placements or, or um, particular employers, it can really inspire them um, to, to go on to great things. And if I, if I refer back to Lou's mentioning Ricky Vogel, the surgeon who came to see us last year, he credits the fact that he went into work, uh, working as a surgeon um, within uh, that, that area of specialism due to the work experience that he did whilst he was at college. And spending his summer working within a kidney unit at a hospital really inspired him to continue on to do that work. And that's how pivotal work experience, if it's good, can actually be. And so what we want to do is foster those links with employers here so that we can actually encourage students to go out and have those opportunities as well. If I just show you some of the partnerships that we've got, and this is a very small sample, um, some of these companies are who we've worked with now for a number of years um, to, to great benefit to ourselves, the students and to the, the um, employers themselves. Um, and, you know, the benefit for them is, is they will, you know, be actually employing some of our college uh, leavers um, either in apprenticeships or later on when they graduate. So Talbot's Law will have, have often worked with us and come into our careers events and to give talks and, and certainly take part in our, our law pathway. HSBC have done a wonderful series of financial skills um, workshops for us, really helping students to understand um, how to be money savvy, what to do with bank accounts, how to live as a student and all of those things that are really important when they're moving from college into adult life at university or employment. Staravale, as I mentioned earlier, who are a fantastic partner for us, really providing those wonderful work experience opportunities to allow students to really understand what it's like to be a teacher, if that's what they need to do. And Wilkes Tranter, who um, has, has many of our uh, alumni working with them and will often come back and do talks for us. And as I say, this is a small sample really of our local and national partners that we have um, really designed to actually benefit our students and other service that we offer um, and all of those will be at our, our events which are coming up our big flagship events which are coming up early October and I'll mention those um, towards the end of the uh, presentation as well. Just going to hand over to Jane now if she, if she wants to come online um, just to talk a little bit about work experience um, and just for our side of things the benefits to it are huge. So I'm going to pass over to Jane and she'll give you a little bit more about that. Hi, I'm Jane. I hope you can hear me. Um, as Faye was saying and also um, Lou, I mean, work experience is extremely beneficial. We do, we do ask students, expect students to take 
undertake work placements, ideally by the end of year 12, because in year 13 they're concentrating on their work or their UFAS applications, but obviously we've still got students coming in and, and doing things. Um, most students will need to source their own placements. We will try and we give as much advice and guidance as we can about how to um, acquire work experience. And also I will post myself, spend every single day posting things on our Padlet, work experience Padlet, and also on the respective pathways. So if students can sign up to the relevant pathways that they're interested in, um, they will see the opportunities and they can apply for them. So we do we do try and help as much as we can. There are certain placements that we manage to acquire for our students, but they're extremely competitive, especially the medicine. So in the end of June, uh, beginning of July, year 12, um, students can apply to do a work placement for a week at Russell's Hall. Um, I think last year we had about 20 plus students doing that, but it is massively competitive, but also massively valuable and worthwhile. So students really enjoy it. They really get locked out of it. We also have something um, called the Starvale um, Academy Trust, who who actually help us source um, work placements for students who want to go into teaching. And that has been brilliant. I mean, last year, I can't remember how many students we got onto it, quite a lot. But in the autumn term, um, somebody called Tom Holder comes along, introduces um, what they do, um, etc. And students, we advertise it on the teaching pathway and students can sign up via that. And then there's a kind of introductory lecture. Um, and then normally, I think by, by you know, it's, it's whether you can source placements in primary and secondary schools and in particular areas. They normally take place during the summer term. Um, and um, I can't remember how many we had last year, but we did have quite a lot. Um, the other thing I've suddenly dropped it massively. OK, right. So we, we expect students to undertake a minimum of two days experience. Ideally, these should be outside college hours. And we do have um, a, de a designated work experience um, slot in Futures Week, which I think begins about May the 13th. So a lot of students will undertake their work experience then. But obviously, we know that certain students can't um, you know, for teaching, for example, or whatever, they can't necessarily do it during that time. So if they can try and do it outside their, their college hours, that's fine. If they have to do it within college hours, we can normally try and accommodate them. But obviously there'll be certain assessment peers which they'll need to miss, um, for example. We have um, work experience workshops which take place in January and February, and that will assist students um, and also advise them on how best to secure work experience. I mean, sometimes I meet with students as well. So I'll meet with students who are finding it particularly difficult to get a work experience slot. And yesterday I had somebody who was looking for um, legal work experience. And that is quite difficult to acquire because often the um, practices will say, you know, the student needs to be over 18 or they don't have time to do it. And so it was encouraging him to think about other areas that maybe he could secure work experience, like maybe a legal department or maybe um, Ministry of Justice do um, various things in the courts where they give allowed students to have work experience. Um, so sometimes it's thinking a little bit outside. So rather than thinking I want to acquire work experience in a specific area, maybe you have to think about other areas which will give you the relevant transferable skills. Um, I think if we move on to the next slide. Just worth mentioning, Jane, I think um, that students can place, uh, put their UNIFARC placement, their placements on UNIFARC. Um, I was using going to say that on yeah. the next slide. Yeah. But yeah, what, what Faye is talking about is Unifog, which is um, a tool that we use um, and we have a work experience tool on there. And it's the students haven't yet been set up on that in year 12. So in year 13, they're kind of sailing along with Unifog. That's, they're quite happy with that. But it's going to be introduced, hopefully, within the next few weeks, Unifog. Students will be set up. And that is how they um, log their work placement. 
and then various um, forms, um, permission forms are sent out to the employer and to the parent, and then I will give permission. Um, we also ask students to um, log, and I don't know whether you're familiar with CD yet, maybe it's something that your, your um, son or daughter haven't talked about, but CD is something where they have to log all their work experience, etc. So there are two things that they need to do. They need to log it on the placement tool on Unifrog, and then we'll be given some information about that. And then they also need to log it on CEDA afterwards. This is just a little um, guide that we um, supply to students about work experience. I can't actually read that because it's too tiny, but there is loads. And I think, you know, fundamentally, um, it talks about you know, how you can acquire a work experience placement, but also what sort of skills you're going to acquire from that placement and how can you find the placement and civil support that's available. Um, and there are loads of opportunities, I mean, as well as uh, the various things that, that I will post on Padlet or the Pathways, there are also virtual opportunities as well, and they are equally um, useful and um, so students, they are best off getting a sort of a spread of work experience if they can. So maybe some virtual here, maybe a bit of practical, a face to face work experience. If you can move on to the next slide. Then someone else is going to talk about the university programs. No, I'm going to talk about them. I've forgotten. Right. OK, so we have a number of we do try, particularly I think it's been improving over the last couple of years is there's lots of kind of widening participation, which is kind of encouraging students to go on to higher education. We have a particular link with the University of Birmingham. We have what's called the A to B scheme, um, which runs in year 13, but there's also the pathways to Birmingham. So the students can sort of join that now and they get help and support. And then um, possibly I think they might get um, a reduced offer if they complete all of the, the two years that's on offer. There's also the Warwick Summer School, which I think is part of the Sutton Trust. The Sutton Trust is very big, sort of um, very um, good at um, encouraging um, widening participation and getting students to go on, especially from sort of low income backgrounds or from um, areas where students don't traditionally go into higher education. Sutton Trust run a number of summer schools which students can sign up for. They have to be fairly sort of speedy in year 12. They have to be, some of them open in October and will close in January. So they have, have got to be fairly speedy. We've also got the pathways to the professions at um, Aston University. So I think it's just a case of students being fairly sort of proactive in terms of work experience and in terms of the widening participation is just trying to get as much information as they can do and also just look on the Padlet. We advertise all of this on the Padlets and on the various pathways and just taking advantage of the support that we can offer and the information that we have. And today I sent out um, an email about STEM, which was for female student, female and non-binary students. So it's the support they can get work experience etc. So that's it really. Next slide. Lovely. Yeah. Thanks, Jane. Yes, thanks so much, Jane. I think I think that's so important is just just encouraging students to take advantage as much as humanly possible uh, of everything that is there to offer because uh, some of those programs are fantastic. And I know Jane will be sending out information about those widening participation programs as well to U12 um, very soon. Um, so it's worth keeping an eye for those because some of the summer schools are really fantastic and give um, a brilliant infrastructure as well as um, potentially preparing students really well for going into uni and um, often will offer um, lower grade entries as, as the ATP scheme does um, if students are successful on them. So really worth keeping an eye on that. If more information will come as well um, about the Unifrog sign up that will be um, given to students during tutorial programmes. 
um, with their PTs, so they'll find out much more about that, and parents will have access to Unifog as well. So we'll give access so that students can see the sort of platform that, that we're using with them um, and, uh, and obviously can support your children along the way um, with any careers research that might be done on them. Um, and so that's a really great useful tool as well. Um, just very quickly to talk about to uh, a few of our up and upcoming events that um, we're really excited about. So our sort of two flagship events are coming up on Wednesday, the 4th of October. Um, easy to remember because they're both on the same day. Um, so we have the morning, which is uh, 10 to 2 p.m. Um, that's the, a higher education fair. Um, students only, as it's in the day, it's open to all students. Uh, we've got 50 plus universities and apprenticeship providers there, um, which is giving, giving our students a chance to go and talk to university providers or apprenticeship providers just to get a feel for what's out there. So for year 12, it's never too early to start thinking about those next steps, which seems a little bit crazy, as you said, when you first start, but actually it's so important. So um, that fair is a fantastic opportunity to go and chat to some uh, universities that perhaps you didn't even know existed or maybe you weren't ever considering, but it, they're there on the doorstep in the main hall in Chambers for you to go and have a chat to. So we really encourage students to take part in that. Um, Russell Group Universities will also be available at that uh, event as well. Then on the evening, Futures Fair, at a 6 to 8.15, we have um, parents and uh, students invited to that, so please do come along. Um, we have a, a huge a number, 40 to 50 employees and professionals um, there at that event, giving a, um, a real insight. A lot of these employers are ex-students, I think about half are our alumni, so they're there really to give a, a good um, sort of insight into what they've done since they've left college, and we've got a real fantastic array of sectors covered um, from public services, law, accounting and finance, uh, medicine, healthcare, lots of different people there to, to um, speak to. So we really do encourage you uh, to come along to that uh, and visit us and, and see what that's all about and start to think about what those next steps are. Um, and then as you can see there, we have some other parent student events. So although we'll have a large number of events that are and just at students for the day, which I won't go through now with you, um, they are available on our website. Um, there's some there that we've highlighted that really just are for parents and students. So introduction to higher degree apprenticeship, careers research, student finance. So we're trying to really help um, prepare students and parents not only for university and that transition to HE, but also if they're still thinking about apprenticeships and, and how to just do careers research, because you, it may seem quite a straightforward thing to do, but actually um, so, and many students that we see just really don't know where to start with it. So that is what Lou and I are here to do and the wider team is really just to be able to provide that, you know, access to that information. And that won't be just for us, as Lou mentioned, at right at the very top, Chris Gorton being our careers uh, curriculum coordinator is really about putting that link in all the way through um, uh, their stu student studies here at college. Um, careers is part of uh, lessons and should be you know, really uh, developed within those lessons so that students really understand what they are going to go on and do potentially with their subjects after they leave college. So you see there a QR code, so by all means scan that. And in a moment, I'm going to put loads of links on, <laughs> so apologies, I'm going to spam the chat, uh, with loads of links for different things um, that we've talked about today. Um, and I'm going to move on to uh, Lou um, so that she can uh, read you through the last slide and I'll yeah, Thank you very much indeed, Faye. Thank you. Um, one of the things that uh, um, holistically um, looking at careers we know is that um, a lovely phrase that I owe to Faye, the golden thread of careers throughout the college and throughout the time that students have with us. It is a golden thread. It actually weaves its way through uh, the curriculum so that subject staff bring in references to employment opportunities related to their subjects, to employers and to people, figures 
uh, uh, role models and alumni. Um, but careers itself runs through lots of themes within the college. So we do use that wonderful expression, the golden thread, and thank you, Faye, for that. Um, and I think it's really important that parents and students uh, have access to all of this information. Um, a wonderful statistic that 60% uh, of primary school students who are currently in primary school will be doing jobs that actually aren't invented yet. That means that we have a huge job. Um, with a very small team, but we have a huge job um, to make sure that we're up to date, that we're informative, that we're inspirational and that we're aspirational for our students. Um, and it takes work. It takes work from students to engage. It takes um, parents to obviously um, be on things such as this. I can see that we've held about 262, I think we're at, um, uh, people online at the moment, and that's a mixture of students and parents. We have 1,200 students in each year. That is actually most the, the, the greatest number we've had on one of our webinars, so we're delighted that you're all here, but it just does reflect actually that this is an important information giving um, opportunity, but it is also uh, incumbent on all of us, I think, to make sure we take up the opportunities that are in front of us. When we were at um, uh, college, as opposed to perhaps at school up until this point, this is mostly voluntary. And that means it's actually effort to take up these opportunities. Um, most of this is not compulsory. We do want students to do that um, at least two days worth of work experience. That's not a huge amount. We'd like students to do a lot more um, and have multiple opportunities. Um, but it is really important that students and parents engage in this. Staff are really keen to share their knowledge, their own pathways as well. So I'd just like to really talk about finally how we communicate. We do that with students and parents via newsletters and parent mail with uh, obviously I think you had an indication of um, the new parent mail that you've just signed up, been signed up to, uh, to give you a link for this uh, particular webinar. Um, there is the career section of the website, as I mentioned earlier, and we do try not to spam students with emails, but actually students tell us that's one of the ways in which they like to receive information. So we do send out information via emails. The MS teams that uh, Faye talked about that we have, of course, with the pathways and our Padlet, which is actually it is a virtual notice board. Um, it is accessible only for students, so it's not a parent uh, opportunity. But I think it, as I say, this is working hand in glove student parent college and hopefully together you will be able to access the information. Um, there are opportunities that we advertise regularly on those Padlets and via those MS Teams for studying abroad, the events, trips and visits. And of course, we use the parent mail. The newsletters, um, you will get a careers newsletter, which uh, Faye is hugely uh, influential in putting together. Um, but you will also get, um, I think, either half termly or termly newsletters from the college. And the careers is always scroll right the way down to the bottom. But please read it. Please engage in that. And please let us have feedback. We have a parent um, uh, survey that we do. We have student uh, surveys that we do. Participation ensures that we keep our service up to date. So please, please do actually complete those and do look at those as well. You can also follow us on Instagram at KE Careers. We have our YouTube careers channel, which this recording of this will go out on over the next uh, few days and possibly next week. We also have um, a LinkedIn profile for King Eds and Careers is actually at the forefront of completing lots of uh, information on those. Um, and I'm very keen that we engage parents as well, 
um, to offer their own services to provide to students. So please do contact us um, in any way you can. Um, we have a careers email, which is careers at kedst.ac.uk, and we would very much welcome um, the opportunity to have any input that you can many of the work experience opportunities many of the speakers that we have actually you know have been sourced through um, both staff and parents um, and it is always helpful to us to engage with um, with those contacts finally we'd just like to draw the uh, uh, occasion to a close with any questions and answers we had some questions in advance and i'm going mm -hmm. to just briefly go through those. Faye, have you got anything to add before I run through some of these questions? No, I think you may have mentioned it, but I've just popped a, a parent survey link on there. Um, so Thank if, um, if uh, any parents would like to respond onto that parent survey, this isn't feedback from today, I'll send them out separately. Um, but that's a parent survey that's going to go around to all parents because we really want to hear parent voice as well as student voice when we're sort of designing our programme of careers events and, and all of that support. So if you'd like to reply to that, we'd be really grateful. Um, so yeah, so it was just that, um, but that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And all those links, a few people have been asking if the links and the slides are going to be sent out and they will as part of this recording as well. So we'll issue those to everybody, to all students um, and, uh, and try to get that out onto parent mail as well. But we're very conscious of not sending it too much to you at once. Um, and we know that as parents of new students, you'll be getting lots of information, I'm sure. But yes, there are. We've got uh, 10 minutes left and, and we're checking the chat. Um, now, um, uh, we've got some questions, which I think, to be honest with you, a lot of a lot of which we've probably already covered. So hopefully um, that would have been covered. Um, uh, so Lou, I think one of them was a study in medicine at university. How can the college support? I think we may have already covered most of that, but is there anything else you wanted to add about Aspire? Yeah, uh, there's a couple of things. Yes, thank you, Faye. I think I'd like to just mention about Aspire. Um, Aspire is um, part of the, the careers and wider provision that the college make for students who aspire um, to uh, reach those Russell Group universities, but also medicine, dentistry and veterinary. We do treat those students slightly differently because they're early entry. So Oxford and Cambridge and medicine, dentistry, and veterinary. So any students um, who have the, uh, aspire to uh, join those professions or have an aspiration to go to the Russell Group and to um, the Oxford and Cambridge universities, um, that will be opened up and will be emailed out to students as an opportunity to sign up. And there will be a, a, a cohort that are um, supported with extra um, uh, opportunities. Um, the medicine, dentistry and veterinary are an interesting um, set of professions where you do need to have work experience in order to actually apply for them. So it's a compulsory element. So we like to make sure that all students are prepped for that. There's also uh, obviously some exams that go with those and some tests that go with those. And that might be the BMAT, the UCAT um, or various tests that you, different universities set. So again, all of that is actually kind of in motion alongside of um, the Aspire programme. I think um, oh, we have- Can I just add had... something about- Yes, yes, sorry, sure, thanks, Work Jim. experience for medicine. Um, over the past few, few years, it's been quite difficult to get work experience, but Russell's Hall are being more sort of open to um, taking students in. So as well as the two weeks during the summer, they're actually accepting more um, students asking for work experience and in pharm pharmacy is still a bit tricky but certainly medicine so i would um, encourage students to kind of pursue that a little bit if they can't get onto the one in the summer to pursue that before then Thank you. Thanks. And and actually, any experience is not wasted. It doesn't matter if you want to go and do teaching. If you've worked in a pharmacy, it's all about gaining skills. And I think Faye, Jane and myself um, would very much advocate that as many opportunities uh, that students have to engage with their employers and see different roles um, performed and gain those skills and qualities is just hugely important. We live in an extremely 
competitive world and we want our students to come out as rounded citizens but very capable of communicating uh, with people obviously that they will need to engage with at a later stage though the sooner th that students have those opportunities the better. Um, a couple of the other kind of questions that we had, and I can see that we've got a couple of questions coming through there. Yeah, um, uh, Lou, I was just going to say, there's yeah. a couple of questions before we move back to the, the pre-submitted ones. Yeah. Um, relating to psychology, work experience with psychology, and which right. kind of pathways that they sit under. Um, and I think, you know, Jane and Lee can both probably uh, weigh in on, on where the best work experience, and it is difficult, so I won't lie, it's hard to get placements in and around sort of psychology in general so is there anything that you wanted to sort of say around those do you think and I think it's really interesting that obviously a lot of um, um, work experience uh, would ideally be sourced in somewhere perhaps like a legal firm or psychology where actually um, the GDPR and confidentiality precludes uh, students from actually participating. So it is that, as Jane said, thinking outside of the box. And for psychology, it could be if it's educational psychology, it could be engaging in a work placement in a school, but very particularly particularly talking to people who are engaging them with an ed psych in a school or maybe even talking to our counsellors who are always welcome, um, welcoming students to talk to them about how they engage in the practice of psychology, using mm -hmm. their psychology within their professions. Forensic psychology is a completely different matter. It's uh, sort of a, a sits across the sciences, so the STEM pathway, as well as um, you know looking at the humanities it bridges that gap so it's kind of it's, it's on an individual basis mm. but the unifrog tool and the tool that is on the website will actually suggest work experience and skills and qualities that actually can be gained through alternative sources of work experience and i think again it's actually trying to draw those together and kind of create the venn diagram if you like uh, of opportunities that create those uh, skills and opportunities that go with the academic abilities as well. So I've just seen one there about uh, somebody who's keen to study European law uh, and perhaps studying abroad. Uh, suggestions at this stage, um, obviously, um, you know, actually um, engaging in anything online. There is a lot of opportunity through Unifrog um, to engage on platforms online um, abroad. It would be interesting to perhaps for that student particularly to come in and have a one to one mm -hmm. where Jane, myself and Faye, uh, we can pull together our knowledge of studying abroad and actually, you know, then looking at perhaps the ideal opportunities for that as well. Um, criminology experience, I can see some of these coming up. I'm sorry, I can't see them all as they're going <laughs> up. Um, uh, but uh, criminology experience is interesting. Again, volunteering perhaps um, uh, in a, a charity, maybe a mental health charity. It could be mm -hmm. actually within the prison service. There are um, uh, crisis online. Um, uh, now that 16 to 18 year olds, it can be actually accessible to uh, facilitate some of these um, jobs online uh, under, under obviously uh, strict uh, authorisation. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, there's also the Ministry of Justice who take a lot yeah. of our students full um, for experience in the courts, so Dudley Court, Birmingham Court, Wolverhampton. Yeah. So they're really good. I mean, there is a kind of a widening participation aspect to it. So you have to be sort of, you know, from a particular background, educational background or live in a particular area. But they've taken a lot of our students. So that's really that's something really helpful. worth Thanks, doing. Jane. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and Ministry of Justice are coming along on the 4th of October, I think, mm -hmm. as well. And it's really important just to engage with as many people as possible to find an angle on some of these. We don't actually do a particular week like most schools do um, for work experience. It's expected to be done throughout the year and normally outside of the normal teaching time. We are able to give students under certain circumstances time off, but it is actually obviously has to be authorised depending on attendance and a number of other factors. 
Um, but we don't have a one off work experience week. We do have, I think, as um, my colleagues mentioned, the week commencing the 13th of May, our futures week, where we would hope that students who have not had the opportunity uh, to fulfill the work experience will take up a number of uh, opportunities we may have to offer ourselves with some trips and visits. But also perhaps parents can look to that week to try and arrange something for students if they haven't had those opportunities. Can I add something there? Obviously, we've got um, we have we introduced the Unifog tool last year, so we have built up a little bit the database of, of um, employers who are obviously happy to offer work experience again. So we'll be writing to them shortly and saying, are you happy to give work experience? We did have somebody. So I'm seeing that there's um, a question about art graphic media work experience. Um, we had somebody called, I think it's DRP in Hartlebury, mm. who gave six of our students work placements. Um, I think with the creative industries, I've also put something on today about the Creative um, Industries Week, which I can't remember when it is, October, no, beginning of November. So that is something that that is one good reason to look on the Padlet all the time and to look on the pathways all the time, because there are opportunities that are advertised. Thank you. Uh, that's really helpful. And Jane is absolutely excellent at sourcing and make, creating these relationships. And so it's a really important part of our role that if you do have connections as well, that we're very glad of them. Um, volunteering is a really interesting thing. We have to go with some government guidelines on what constitutes work experience. And we're given some guidelines through the Gatsby benchmarks. And volunteering is a really interesting one. I know that all three of us uh, as the college would support, volunteering is an extremely valuable um, sort of uh, measure, I think, of, of students being engaged um, in um, a workplace and learning skills and qualities and giving time and something back. And they gain a huge amount from it. The NCS programme, all sorts of things advocate that. However, um, traditionally, work experience actually has to meet the requirements that are listed on that wonderful diagram that Jane showed you that we could hardly read. But actually, there are some parameters and it might just be worth rather than me mentioning it. Thank you. It might be worth you having a look at that. It is online on our website. Sure, um, yeah, we'll send it round again. Sorry. Thank you. Work experience um, actually doesn't have to be checked in terms of um, for us to say it's work experience. It has to be entered onto the tool, um, the Unifrog tool, and put onto CEDAR. Um, but there are certain processes that are engaged in, and obviously it's really important from a parental perspective that we do actually check out those placements. And um, that the tool actually then uh, goes through a process whereby employers have to complete a section as well, so that the um, health and safety and safeguarding aspect are taken care of, and that it does constitute work experience. So yes, in some ways there are checks and balances made on this uh, process. Just to move on for a moment from work experience, if that's okay, just looking at some of the other questions that we've had. Um, there were some questions around um, uh, the UCAT, which is, is an admissions test for, for medicine, which um, you can actually have support with through Aspire and through the enrichment programme, so it's worth looking at those uh, later on. There was a question about when you could sign up for Pathways, um, and that is during the enrichment sign up. It isn't part of enrichment, so that you will have the ability to sign up for another enrichment programme. Um, so if you wanted to go and do therapeutic uh, colouring, then that's absolutely fine um, or, or whatever else. But you can then also do a pathway or more than one pathway. So if you're interested in STEM as well as law um, or if you want to do perhaps thinking about um, banking and accounting as well as law, that's absolutely fine. You can sign up for those. And then, um, as we say, that will be after um, the Freshers' Fair, which is on the 5th of October, the day after our two big events. So, so it was a busy couple of days, <laughs> the first week in October. Um, there was another few questions um, as to do with what to do with in their um, students' independent time, free time between lessons. And Lou, I think you had some thoughts about this earlier when we were chatting about it, weren't you? 
Yeah, I think that, you know, that obviously um, five hours um, per teaching time per subject and uh, we um, do hope that students will set, spend at least that amount of time per subject as well also in their own time studying. It's a considerable amount and one of the King, the King Edward's um, kind of mantras is actually about how to learn independently and independently study that is supported with help for those who find that difficult and there are places to study around the college but we would encourage students to get involved as student ambassadors um, to get involved in any volunteering or work experience if they do have the opportunities within their timetable to do that um, but of course there are obviously restrictions on that um, in terms of what is available to them and we wouldn't want them to be pressurised into filling their week so that they were unable to obviously have downtime as well as that study time. Is there anything you want to add to that, Faye? No, I think that's absolutely great. And I think one of the comments in the chat was um, if they have a free day during the week and they do the work experience then. And, and absolutely, if you yeah. um, historically what perhaps primary school placements used to do was do a few hours um, if they had a morning off every Monday or, or, or whatever in the week, they would do those hours spread across a number of weeks. Um, which sometimes can give you a better flavour of a work experience placement and, and feel much more fulfilling than just a you know one off block of time actually. Um, so it all depends on the student's workload and how they can sort of you know juggle everything. And it can be it can be quite challenging at first. It's a really big step up from GCSEs to A levels, I think we can all agree. Um, and so it's a, it's about just trying to find that balance. Um, not getting too stressed out about doing all of these extra things but when students do feel that they have the time and the capacity to do that actually engaging in things like MOOCs on Unifrog and extra reading and TED talks and you know whatever else that might inspire them is, is really good and it will help out when it comes to their university application or applying for apprenticeship or whatever that obviously is really um so that's great um there was a question about university open days which i think somebody put in the chat as well um we encourage students to go to university open days and students can take time off college to do that um we have as we've mentioned, 50 plus universities coming to visit. Um, so we're trying to bring those here to the college for students. Um, and we do encourage students to attend the UCAS Discovery Day. Um, and the apprenticeship well. fair as well. And the, the apprenticeship, apprenticeship fair is really important. Yeah. Too. And so those are really big things that we encourage um, students to go and do. Well, there will be usually an Aspire trip down to Oxford or Cambridge as well. Um, and so all the other universities, we, we rely on students to, to you know, make those decisions about which open days they want to go to. Um, but we certainly do encourage them because it, it is extremely helpful and inspiring students and helping those who don't even know what they want to do or what they want to study. Um, going and speaking to students can make a massive difference. Um, I think we can all agree with really, you, Thanks, Faye. And I, I think in conclusion, as I know we're running out of time or we've run out of time, actually, but um, what, I think it's really important that you can see, I hope, how enthusiastic as a team we are. Uh, the college as a whole is extremely uh, interested in supporting uh, students and parents through their time with us in the two years that they're with us. The time goes incredibly quickly. Uh, Jane and myself have had a uh, um, uh, uh, children come through this um, college and Faye has that possibly yet to come. They've all been very different, very different indeed, and different experiences, different young people. And we want to ensure that your child and for students who are online, um, I'm speaking to you as well, that actually we want all of you to have an individual experience that is rounded, um, that is inspiring and as I say that you come out as aspirational as possible um, and it's okay not to know what you want to do mm -hmm. and I think most of us would agree that at this stage we didn't know and some of mm -hmm. us still don't know and um, so <laughs> um, I think we would really welcome the interaction uh, from parents from students just engage uh, use that golden thread it, it is a great uh, kind of analogy to have that uh, 
running through, I think, the thread of uh, the college time you have with us. Um, and we very, very much look forward after college to welcoming students back as alumni, as we do uh, those alumni that will be there here on the 4th of October. Just ending to say thank you very much indeed for being with us this evening. Uh, I hope it's been helpful. We hope that we've inspired parents uh, to engage with us as well. So thank you very much. Come along to the 4th of October parents as with students in the evening and students come and talk to as many people as you possibly can, including ourselves. Uh, thank yeah. you all very much indeed for staying online. All thank the very you. best. Thanks so much. Thank